Okay, example 7, we're given a diagram. You see a 5, 12, 13 right triangle, and angle beta is marked here, one of the acute angles. And we're told to find beta three different ways. So we will find beta with the inverse sine function, with the inverse cosine function, and with the inverse tangent function. And we should get the same answer in each case. So let's do the inverse sine first. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the sine of angle beta is 5 over 13. So that means beta is the inverse sine of 5 over 13. So let's pull up the calculator and do the inverse sine of 5 over 13. And again, you would be expected to use the calculator on this. We get 22.62 degrees. So let's write that in, 22.62 degrees. Now that was the inverse sine function. We can also do this with the inverse cosine function. Here's angle beta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of beta is 12 over 13. So beta will be the inverse cosine of 12 over 13. And that should give us the same number. So let's try that on the calculator inverse cosine of 12 over 13 and there it is exactly the same number 22.6 we'll round it to 22.62 and the inverse tangent should give us the same value also here's angle beta tangent is opposite over adjacent so the tangent of beta is 5 over 12 so beta will be the inverse tangent of 5 over 12 so we'll write inverse tangent of 5 twelfths, and on the calculator it should be the exact same thing. Inverse tangent of 5, whoops, 5 twelfths, and there it is, 22.62. Okay, example 8 looks very similar. We're given a right triangle and we're, we're given an angle, in this case angle theta down here, and we're told to find theta three different ways, but it doesn't work out quite as nicely, and you'll see, and I'll explain why. So let's find theta with the inverse sine, the inverse cosine, and the inverse tangent. So first the sine function. Here's angle theta. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta will be 5.42 over 9.16. So theta will be the inverse sine of 5.42 divided by 9.16. And on the calculator, let's, uh, let's see what that is. The inverse sine of 5.42 divided by 9.16. And we get 36.277. I'm going to write all of those digits to because I'm going to make a point using them. 32, oh, sorry, 36.2779 Okay, now watch what happens when we do the inverse cosine. We're going to find theta using the inverse cosine. Okay, so here's theta. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is 7.38 over 9.16. So theta will be the inverse cosine of 7.38 divided by 9.16. And on the calculator, we should get the same answer. Inverse cosine is 7. Point, inverse cosine of 7.38 divided by 9.16. And look at that, we get 36.324. It's a little bit different. It didn't come out to be exactly the same. Let's write this down. 36.324326333. Okay, and let's look at inverse tangent also. The tangent of angle theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So the tangent of theta is 5.42 over 7.38. So theta will be the inverse tangent of 5.42 divided by 7.38. And let's see what the calculator says for that. 
inverse tangent of 5.42 divided by 7.38. And we get, again, 36 point something, but it's not exactly the same. 36.29420582. Okay, now why did these numbers not come out to be exactly the same like they did in the previous example? Look back here at example 7. We did this. We got the exact same number. We rounded it here in, um, in this case, but if you remember on the calculator, those were exactly the same out to as many digits as the calculator could compute. And the reason is because these numbers are exact. The 5, 12, and 13. 5, 12, and 13, those numbers exactly form a perfect right triangle. In this example, these numbers are not actually exact. These numbers do form a right triangle, but they aren't precise. They're only, they're only accurate to, um, to three digits. If you do 7.38 squared plus 5.42 squared, it should come out to 9.16 squared, but it doesn't come out to 9.16 squared exactly. It's approximate. These numbers are accurate to three digits or two decimal places, and we so we would expect the same kind of accuracy over here. And notice that that's what we have. We have we're given three digits of accuracy in these numbers, and look what we get here. 36.3, 36.3, and 36.3, rounding some of those. So we get about the same accuracy out of our calculations here as the accuracy of the numbers that we put in. The reason these calculations don't give us identical results is because the numbers that we put in were only uh, limited in their accuracy to begin with.